So I'm big on critical thinking. So which means is you can be doing something repetitively, but if you don't know where you're going and how to judge what is good, what is bad, then you cannot produce good results. You're just kind of doing like a machine. So the critical thinking, we develop this part of every day we start with critical thinking. You practice on something, then the next day we kind of reflect on what we did, what's good, what's bad, and how to identify one or the other. Um, today we're going to talk about critical thinking regarding graph preparation, and then in the afternoon you're going to um, do graph placement, or today you're going to do graph placement. Tomorrow Tina is going to do critical thinking regarding graph placement. So both days you develop a way of thinking through what you're doing. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to present your picture, and then I want someone to tell me what's wrong with this picture. Okay, one at a time. Yes? Um, the forceps should be at the front left, and yeah, because he's starting in the middle. Isn't that what's wrong? Okay, next, possibly. Anyone else? I think it should be turned like this. And yeah, it should be okay. turned like this. It should be hold on top and um, pull it out mm. from the back. Good. So, it should be held here. Oops. Oh, you can't go back. It is. There was a something. There. Tina, help me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. So, it should be held here and not below, right? Okay, so what's wrong with this? Where do you see? How did I end up? Anyhow, I was, the previous one was transaction. Darn. <laughs> ah. Okay, we'll figure it out. So what I wanted to show you is to identify slivers that they have transaction. So what's wrong with these slivers? Yeah, that should work better, perfect. And so the answer was transaction, I'm sorry I gave it away. And how do we do this? Um, you'll have to swipe it, there's a laser though, so you have to okay. it. Okay, it's a transaction. So I'm going to show you transaction here, transaction here, transaction here, transaction here, this is transected, this is transected, this is transected, this, 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 this. I have a quick question. Sure. Like over here, there's some graph that is still have follicle and tissue and everything. Do we plant those? They are not, you have to isolate those. Mm -hmm. Yes, once we, so when we look at this liver, one, this one, I turn it on the other side, if it's a full intact follicular units, yes, you're going to implant it. But what I'm trying to identify is, when I look at the sliver, how do I know that is this a good sliver or a bad sliver? So this is the sliver that had transection. So what does it look like when it doesn't have transection? Darn. Okay, so when... Um, he said I can advance with this, so I won't be touching the screen. <coughs> so they are totally intact follicular units, you see? Right? Mm -hmm. This one looks transected, but it has a telogen here, so it's still a good... See the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see if this one... I should be able to advance with this one. Power, maybe not. Actually, let's see. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay, so there's a sliver one and sliver two. What do you see as a difference between these two slivers? Um, the sliver one is not um, one. 
correct. Okay, so this is what it looks like. See how this portion is thicker? See how there's a bunch of hairs here? You can see, see, and then all of a sudden there's this bunch of hairs. Good? Okay. So this is what the correct thin sliver looks like. You can almost see through. And that's the objective of slivering, creating a, a single row that you can easily see through and then cut in between. Good? Okay, next. Okay, so how should you orient your tissue? One, two, three, or four? How many of you says one? How many of you said two? Three, four? Good, all of you were correct. So this is the correct way because when you start slivering, the hair is pointing away from you and you can open and see in between. Yes? Do you need me to go back to see the differences? One more time. Okay, one more time. Okay, so see how this is pointing. If you start opening, you won't be able to see because it's pointing in toward you. The other thing is, when tissue comes out, it has a little angle to it, so it's not as stable in this direction. It feels like it's stable by leaning on the other side because when it's taken out of the skin, it has a little angle to it. So this means it feels when you put it this way, it kind of leans on that angle side. It, it fits better. The other thing, it opens, it's easier to see. See how I can see this side, but here it's hidden, it goes underneath. So the fact that I can see where I'm going, it's easier on this one. Here I can maybe go, this one is, would still probably work, but this one will not, because I can go underneath here and dissect, I won't be able to see, right? Okay. What's wrong with this dissection? Mm, okay, there's a. Okay. Okay. So what is wrong with that is there's a lot, they all look the same. I just kind of went and top, top, chop, chop. They need to be trimmed. You see how much extra tissue they have? Mm -hmm. See what I'm looking for? Good. So they need to be trimmed. And so what I do, I t it go one at a time, and then I start sorting them. The previous picture is showing us just chopping time. them. And it's also just going in and isolating it instead of really finishing one and then sorting that one, finishing, touch, moving to the next one. So going one at a time versus just gonna going through, okay? So dissecting one at a time, sort, and then proceed to the next one. Okay, so how about, this is the similar, now you can see what's wrong with these. They have extra tissue, right? So when they are trimmed, before trimming them, they all look the same, they fit, they look the same size. But they're actually, when you trim them, they're not the same size. See the difference? So let's look now. So this is one follicular unit. See how much smaller it is? This is a two follicular unit. This is a three follicular unit. Even though it's a one-tenth of the millimeter difference between them, they fit better in a size site that is created for them than to be squeezed or, so they have to be consistent in size. So they are, you're sorting them by size and the number of grafts inside of the follicular unit. Does that make sense? So if I go back, and I'm going to go back and forth so you can see. See how here, they're all the same size, but actually they need to be different size because they have a different number of hairs inside of them, yes. But yesterday during the surgery, Dr. Harris, it didn't look like he switched blades to, blades to get different sizes. Yes, he did. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so each, each blade holder looks the same, but they have a little bit of uh, tape on there to identify which is the correct size. So I went through and made all the threes and fours first, and you probably didn't notice I switched and grabbed the, the small. In the one. way that Tina knew which one is just by feeling. Like she'd go, oh, that one's too big. So what I had him do is I made, so 
when we did the calculation based on, on the cutters, and I knew what percentage was going to be threes and fours versus ones and twos, mm -hmm. I calculated it'd be, we'd, we'd be around 400 threes and fours. So I cut about 450 and then switched to the other one. So I told them to fill up threes and fours all the way from left to right. Uh, and when they ran out, so it's never going to be exact. You're going to have some overlap where they're either putting small graphs into big sites or, or squeezing. Oh, okay. But we tend not to do that. We but tend to make more. Okay, so you guys were communicating that when you were doing that. Right, so okay. I, when, when I told them the plan, they filled threes and fours all the way until they ran out, and then ones and twos. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. And so if you look, so this is a great question because that kind of keeps picture constantly filling pieces within a big picture, right? So the, so when you think about these two will fit in the same side in a patter pattern yesterday. So when Dr. Harris is probably works the hairline, you change the, do you have a one hair, this different blade size for one and twos in a hairline? But in a crown, the crown is different because the, the pattern is a little bit different. It doesn't matter, one and twos can be mixed together. So the physician's creativity will dictate how you place your grouts, but you have to understand they have to be trimmed certain way to fit certain sizes, right? So these will be, be grouped together, and then three and fours probably will be the same size, similar, they are similar size. Okay, so we, the correct way is to trim extra tissue and see how they're consistent in size. Okay, what's wrong with this picture? Yes, the forceps is too low, okay? To grasp the top. Okay, so how many, this is the operative word, good grabs do you see here? Okay? Maybe one, yeah. <laughs> so we have, this one is transected here, so this is, so the, the rule is bottom two-thirds give a viable hair, that can grow thick like a normal hair. Top two thirds can give a hair, possibly regrow hair, but the, that hair may be weaker. So the, the ideal is to keep two, bottom two thirds, and we call them questionable. You never put them in strategic places. Two thirds of the follicles. Two thirds of the follicles, yes. Sorry, thank you for clarification. So what I do is I take the full length graft and put this beside the full length and see if it's a two-third or, or, or half. Because we need a bulge and a bulb in order for hair to regenerate. That's where the two-thirds come into place. So I would measure this against this and it's probably half. Darn. <laughs> I have this now. I can go back. So it's probably half, and I would say that's not a good one. And it, whatever I have a questionable, I keep on a side, and those are going to be extra grafts if I can use and plant them, right? I mean, plant them. But I, the objective is to have intact grafts. This one is waste, it's not complete. This one has a two transection. Once again, it's probably half, it's not even two thirds. So that means from all this, I will probably trim these two and have one good graft. And this one is just need to maybe trim a little bit tissue. It seems like an intact graft. And this one has all three hairs transected. Yes? Mm -hmm. So comment on these grafts. What do you see? Transection. Okay. How about the third one? one the first one is transected. Mm -hmm. The second one is good. The second one is good. It has a, see how it has a little bulb? It's a telogen here. So what ha happens with hair bulb, it starts getting smaller and going, raising up and somewhat disappears. And then it can regrow. So this is a viable hair. This is transected hair. When it's transected this high, you probably just can pull it out and, and kind of leave you uh, clean. So the, when transected hair is in a questionable length, so let's say if it's a little bit longer, and you leave it in. It may regrow hair. So you never place these hairs with a one a complete hair follicle and then one transected questionable in a hairline because if it grows hair, it is going to look pluggy. Does that make sense? Yeah, excuse me. 
excuse me. Uh, we can use this graph uh, if we get the another one to translate it out. If we take it. Yes. Back. We can use it. Yes. You can use it because it has a full but intact. You need to get rid of the so either you get rid of the transected hair, or if it's too close and if you start seeing that if you start trimming it, you're going to damage this hair, you leave it in, but you never place it as a one hair graft. Because it potentially can grow the second hair, and if you put it in the very front of the hairline, it may grow two hairs, it may look pluggy. So you're doing the critical thinking while you're placing. Not only critical thinking while you're counting, you're doing critical thinking while you're placing. Um, if the hair doesn't have bulge and bulge So this is, remember how I said you need a bulge and a, bulge. The, the, yeah, there's a ma some s regenerative cells around the bulb, and they're not on the tip, they're like this. Mm -hmm. And they're around here. So we don't know, we, there's no strict line here and strict line here. There's a study showing that if you have two-thirds of the bottom part of the entire hair follicle, they survive in regenerate full thickness hair. If you have two-thirds of the top, they re possibly regenerate hair, but it's a weaker hair. Okay? Come on. Okay, ho comment on these graphs. What do you see? Yes. So they are all intact follicular units, but there is a tissue, extra tissue on them. So there's a extra tissue on the bottom, and there's extra tissue around. This one is good. So what's wrong with this picture? Yes. And also, it starts chipping oh, off yeah, these yeah, particles. I showed you yesterday, I oh, did this on my, yeah, it's foreign body reaction. Can you use, do you have to use wood? Can you, how about the silicone that you guys use? So the soft silicone is good for slivering. There's a clear view, the hard silicone that is edged, so that's used for graft dissection. So those are the, <laughs> so for slivering, you can use soft silicone, and it works better because it doesn't dull um, your blade and also what it does you can pin your tissue better because needles stay in better um, and then you can do hard silicone boards and they're clear and you can even put the back lighting underneath and it helps you see through okay but if you're using tongue blades you just have to know that so when you see so this is the you always look at your board whether there is like shininess that this is a wet board but I also look that there's no edging So what is, what is unusual on this? Can you notice something? There's something a little bit unusual. First, this is tricky. The first uh, follicle has two bulbs, but it turns like one. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This. There's a piece of that board. I said uh, this is a little tricky. This piece <laughs> ended up on my graft. And if I don't see how hard it is to see it, you put it in with your graft, and then it becomes a foreign object, foreign body reaction. So keep your eye constantly sharp, eagle eyes. And I wanted to show you, this is so I oftentimes see this, and then that's indication I go and see who was dissecting grafts that didn't pay attention when the board is starting to fall apart. Move on your board or flip the board or take a new board, but this may happen, so just be aware that this is not you. See how it is? This is, and I took in a different lighting to show you which way it shows you. So there's a something off on a graft, and that was the part of the board. Okay, what is different between these two boards, the, these two photos? <laughs> one's dry, one's wet. Yes, one's dry, one's wet. So that's your key. Like, oh, I need, to, I need to spray my grafts. I need to spray my field. So it's moist, right? Um, and I gave you the answer. What is wrong with this one? Is it too thick? Yes, too thick, <coughs> right? See, you can't see well through here. Because if I start cutting here, it's kind of, these are f nicely lined up, but if they intersect on, uh, they kind of splay on the other side, then if you start cutting through, you're going to cut <coughs> the one on the other side. OK? 
Okay, so this is the idea. It has to, you should be able to see well through your sliver. Okay, what's wrong with this one? Too many slivers on a board. One sliver at a time, one sliver at a time. If you take, if you kind of work on this one, you pile these so it can be faster. These start drying. You take one sliver at a time. And so correct one, one sliver at a time, and you work on your sliver. OK, comment this picture. The way, the way it is. Now you know, right? And holding it too low. Yeah, so it's kind of all cramped inside. You see, we say hold it as a pencil. Some people hold a pencil like underneath, like this. So just you can't necessarily hold it as a pencil. Mm. So that's the correct way. It's resting here. It's resting there. What's, what's wrong with this one? Yes, good. Seeing vision, like whew, nice, relaxed. Good? OK. That would be all for today's critical thinking on graph dissection and placement. So now you're ready to go and do more. <laughs> uh, any comments, any questions? Do you ever place hairs that are OK just with one with the two thirds on the top that doesn't have a bulb? Rarely. But if, for example, if the, the patient has a very limited donor hair, and we placed everything else, we keep questionable, and then we do stick in place because the site needs to be a little bit shallower, and we put them in a strategic place, which is where it's not most important, but it's, it's hoping that hair will grow. So you can't count on those hair, you can just hope. So you, so you don't you sell your... Keep those, though, the, the, the two-third ones, top ones, you just keep them as... If, if, if my donor is very limited. But the objective number one is not to make those. <laughs>